me today Tanya Canaps Caps <laughs> uh oh I messed it up anyway she is it's the Capus, but that's okay Capus. she is the author of a series of mysteries and so I'll let her tell you about her books well first off Julia um, thanks for having me I really appreciate it um, I think it's very exciting to be able to um, hold a kind of a Skype, I know this isn't Skype, but whatever it's called, mm -hmm. um, interview, I love that. Um, that's one thing that I love about technology. Um, but we'll talk a little bit about my books and then I'll tell you why I love technology so much. Okay. Um, I am a, well, first I am an author of 12 books. Um, wow. The latest series, <laughs> the latest mm -hmm. series, um, that I had at, that just came out is a new series um, called the Divorce Diva series, and it's a mystery about a group of women that are in a divorced support group, and of course they um, come up with all crazy ways to plot out how to kill their exes. But when <laughs> someone when an ex really does show up dead, um, then um, you know, their fingerprints are all over it. So they have to collectively come together and sleuth, you know, since it is a cozy mystery. But I'm drawn to cozy mysteries because um, it is an amateur sleuth, and it's generally a woman, and obviously, you know, that appeals to me. Um, mm -hmm. And they find themselves in very crazy, sticky situations. Um, and it's generally based around like a hobby or a craft. Mm -hmm. And in that particular series, Strung Out to Die, it is set in a lapidary, which is a bead shop. And I have some history in beading. I used to own a um, beading company, and um, I did that for years. And uh -huh. so, you know, it's always fun to revisit that. So the reader also in Cozy Mysteries learn about the actual hobby. Uh, there's beading patterns in the back of the book, so they can go out and bead an eat simple also, pattern. Oh, it attracts um, them both for the story and for the knowledge that they're gaining. It's always fun to see a normal, everyday person, uh, you know, try to... Uh, exonerate themselves from a murder because you know they're generally stuck in the murder and they have to figure out how to how to say you know i didn't do it i didn't kill him although he was found on my bead floors dead with the bead of uh, the string of my beads around his neck um, <laughs> but one of my most popular series um that is a cozy mystery but it's a paranormal now strung out to die is not a paranormal mystery but um the series behind me is the magical cure series and that is a paranormal series that is very light paranormal um i like to call myself a beach read a be meaning that um it's not one of those in-depth thriller, you know, uh, mm -hmm. crazy shapeshifter kind of things. It's about a girl, my heroine, she's in all of the books, um, and her name is June Hill, and she's from a small town, and she um, is the owner of a homeopathic cure shop which she doesn't understand really how when people come, she runs the business first off in a flea market. And so uh -huh. all these people always flock to the flea market to get her cures because she has no idea. She just puts stuff together, but it does heal people and it helps them with what they came to, to, to seek help for. So she finds out um, in the first book, um, oh, I'm sorry, I better turn that off. <laughs> she finds out in the first book that she um, 
is from a spiritualist family. And I call it a spiritualist family because they're, they're all like different types of mediums and um, psychics, mm-hmm. um, you know, witches. And it's a world um, that she realizes that she's part of. And so she moves her homeopathic cure shop to this magical little town. And mm-hmm. that's where she finds out that she does have all these powers. And um, she has a, she's had a cat for, since her 10th birthday. And he's really turns out to be her magical uh, fairy god cat. So he is um, a big part. People love him. Um, he is a big part of helping her solve a crime because, um, of course, she's the amateur sleuth and someone um, shows up dead and, and it's because of her, but really it's not. But in the book, she has to use all her magical um, cures and, you know, some truth serums and some things come out in the community that people don't want to tell, but she gives the truth serum to people that don't realize they're getting it. Um, but that's been a really popular series. I think those paranormal series that put people in a different magical world mm-hmm. um, is you know, what they escape to. And I write with humor and everything I write is, is made up. But from the beginning of my novels to the end, um, I involve my readers. I'm mm-hmm. very um, involved with my readers and I hold contests for um, if they can name, give me, if I need a name, because it's kind of hard for me to come up with names for some <laughs> reason. And so I ask them, you know, if you can, whoever wins the name, name this character contest um, or someone named the actual, I had a contest for someone named the actual city where the charming uh, series is set and they want, of course, um, a name in the book as well as part of the dedication of the book. Uh, but I have a street team, and that is, I started that about a year um, or a year and a half ago. And a, not, there wasn't a lot of street teams around at that time, and now I'm seeing a lot pop up. But what a street team is, is um, I was getting a lot of reader mail, and I love to uh, meet with my readers. I love to travel to my readers. I oh, love really? to go to a central location and host a tea. Um, I, um, so I got, would get a lot of emails from readers. So I said, well, why don't we all join one central location um, where we can all talk about books? It doesn't have to be about my books. I'm a reader just like you. And so we all joined a Facebook page of my street team. And we get, I give out um, one giveaway a week. It might be a free book. It might be one of my good friend's books. It might be a free book of mine. It might be a bracelet that I beaded. Um, it could be all sorts of anything, you know, and they um, are always there for me. If I have a new book coming out, they uh, tweet it, they Facebook it, they promote it. Uh, a lot of them have book clubs, so we do Skype book clubs. Um, if they're um, local, then I go to their homes and, and do an author book club with them. Uh, but I send out uh, three or four what I call surprises every month. Uh, I have all their emails, so I try to, or uh, mailing addresses, I mean. So I send out little goodies in the mail when they're not expecting it. Um, you know, I try to hit their birthdays. And I'm talking, you know, maybe right now we have about uh, a little under a 1,000 readers. So, so that are, how many that are hours a day are you have to join. doing all this? How many hours a day are you doing all this? <laughs> well, you know, I am a mother um, of three teenagers in the house. Uh, teenage boys. So um, I do a lot of sports practices. Uh, I a lot of late night ball games. So I find time writing um, at those places. And a lot of parents that know me, if they don't see a pen in my hand or my laptop, they're thinking something's wrong because I'm generally <laughs> writing um, at sports practices, car line, um, at sports games. Um, and then in the morning, um, you know, it's, it only takes a little bit of time, really, um, if, if you plan it right. Now, I don't get sucked into um, staying on Facebook for hours at a time or Twitter or Pinterest or all the other social medias like Goodreads and and Google Plus, I set a timer in the morning when I get up 
Uh, my kids get off to school about 6.45, and I sit at my desk, and I do all my social networking, um, and then I make sure that I go to the post office once a week to mail out the stuff. So everything that I do is pretty scheduled, um, oh, okay. but I do hop on, um, say I'm in the grocery line, and I can hop on Facebook real quick and, and kind of chat there for a couple of minutes while I'm in the grocery line. Um, but I'm very active, and um, you know, that's on one good phone. thing that I absolutely love. So you do that on your I'm phone sorry. when you're in lines? I do. Yeah, I do. I have an iPhone. Um, I don't know what I ever do without my iPhone. Um, <laughs> but, when, like, if I'm with my readers or if I'm with people eating, I do put that away. I don't keep it out. I'm not one of those. But, um, you know, I do stay connected with my readers pretty well. So, well, okay. This year. So that's interesting. That's very interesting. <laughs> So you have your built-in audience. You don't have to worry when you write a new book. You know it'll sell. Well, you know, I still um, I do an online virtual um, book book release, and I have a great a great networking of friends that are other authors, and I might put out an email to them and say, "Hey, I'm going to do a book release. Would anyone like to donate a book?" Because my book releases aren't about my book. I feel like it's for my readers um, so and their loyalty. And, and so there's an invitation for them, and they can come, um, and they can bring friends, of course. And, again, it's online, and it's an active. Um, and I have that on Facebook. So um, what we do is I generally get about between 80 and 100 other authors donating a copy of their book to me. Um, wow. So I give out a book about every 20 minutes for a full day, and it's wow. not my books. It's me trying to help my friends get other readers. It's for my, uh, you know, my readers. I want them to get new author friends. Right. And so all I ask from an author, I'll say, um, you know, if you guys don't mind tweeting or Facebooking or sharing that I have a new novel out, that would be great. And I don't expect them to do it, but a lot of times they do. And then, of course, I'll do the same for them when they have a book out. Mm -hmm. um, but it's really fun. We, uh, I throw up pictures of have a snack and Mm -hmm. I'll say, uh, I'll have a picture of a snack or I'll have a picture of a crazy looking cat or something because it depends on what the book is. And then sometimes I give away like Amazon gift cards or Barnes and Noble gift cards, um, different things like that. So, um, you know, it's really fun. And since then, um, this year, um, I have band together with four other authors and I can't really give all the details now, but um, we are going to be traveling together as a group and um, hosting a lot of good things for all of our readers um, wow. in the United States this year. So it's pretty exciting what's happening um, with readers and authors. And, um, you know, we don't give away too much of our personal life, but we just connect with them. I, I probably know a lot more than I should about their personal life, but, um, <laughs> you know, as a reader, there's nothing uh, greater than when I would go to, and I still go to book signings or visit with my favorite authors. I love it when they say, oh, hey, Tanya, and they hadn't seen me for like two years. So I make sure, and I, that made me feel good. So when I first, when I first, when I published my first book, I want my readers to feel good too. Um, because I, in today's world, it's so crazy. I know my life is crazy, and I think that, I mean, it just floors me that one person at the end of a busy day sits down with my book and opens it up and gets lost in a world that I just completely made up one day. And, yeah. I mean, it's just such an honor, and I'm so grateful for it. And so that's one you know, reason why I give back to my readers is because I feel like that is, you know, just so important. It really, really is. So it is. That, it's busy. Uh, that connection, we all need that human connection. And sometimes all this technology is, it can both give it to you and take it away. Right. Well, and that's the thing. A lot of, and, and that's one thing with technology. I am obviously really shy. <laughs> I'm very outgoing. So the way I can, you know, I think my personality shines through. 
um, online as it does, uh, you know, when I'm in person. So that's one good thing. A lot of, and I do teach a lot of writing classes to authors. Um, I have a marketing and promoting um, nonfiction craft book that I teach. And I also travel around um, teaching um, authors how to market and promote their books. Um, so, uh, I give them a little quiz in the beginning that's, uh, called the, what's your, uh, PR personality? Because with the internet now, whether you're an introvert or an extrovert or both like me, you know, you can still, you know, reach your target audience and reach your reader. Um, even if you don't want to go to book signings, you don't have to do those things. You know, you can just go in and sign stock or you can, you know, meet with them online like I do. Um, or if you're an introvert and can do both like I do, you know, that's great too. But it is, um, technology can be good and can be bad. But I think it's great for those authors that don't like to do public speaking um, mm -hmm. and, yeah. you know, really do have a great personality, but you wouldn't know it because they're so shy in person. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. Wow. This is a lot of information. And how many books do you yeah. have? Um, I have 12 books um, and that's. Those, I did start out writing women's fiction, and that was a little bit harder, um, um, to, I think, to break into. Uh, I did well with the first book. It actually won the um, E-Festival of Words, um, which is a online, um, I, I don't know who nominated me, a reader nominates you. So I won that um, and with my first book, Carpe Beatum, and it was set in... Um, the Cincinnati area, which I'm, I live in Northern Kentucky, but I'm a stone throw from Cincinnati, Ohio. So, um, you know, it was set in that area. So instead of, you know, having, I did have book signings, um, at regular, uh, you know, good old brick and mortar stores, but I also thought outside the box because that was also a book about beating, um, jewelry beating. Mm -hmm. And so I had, um, you know, you, you can have, it's really fun to have readers come to a lapidary or a beading store for mm -hmm. a release party and you guys can make a bracelet or, you know, I always tell um, people to think outside the box and what would be fun, you know, make it fun for your readers. Yeah. Um, and then I, um, yeah, so then I have another, um, series that's a cozy mystery series called the Olivia, Olivia Davis Paranormal Mysteries. And that was a double finalist in the, um, Next Generation Indie Book Awards that's given out at the Book Expo in New York City. Um, wow. so that was a double finalist, which I was pretty proud of, um, in the humor category and mystery. And that is about a young lady that has an online breakup service. Um, <laughs> and a lot of people don't get that at first, but she, it is paranormal. And so she reads auras. And um, she can't have a normal job because when auras collide, she faints. So companies won't ever hire her because she's always fainting. <laughs> so what she does is she has an online breakup service called Splitsville.com. And she, um, the clients will email her um, and pay in full, and they email, you know, something about the breakup because she's going to call and break up for them and on, on a phone call, and they have to give her information that no one else would know except the couple. So the other person would believe her because if someone called and said they're breaking up with you for your boyfriend, that's kind of unbelievable. But when she throws out some private information, sometimes it can be scandalous and sometimes it's really funny. And then they're like, oh my goodness, you know, this is real. And so when a client of hers does show up dead, then the police trace it right back to her. So again, she's an amateur sleuth and she goes undercover um, in her books, um, she takes on many, many roles. So um, that was another um, book that was, uh, you know, that became um, a number one Amazon mover and shaker book. So wow. that was pretty cool. Whenever um, it made that number one, that number one on Amazon. Um, so that that's a really fun series to write into. And 
you know, I'm always, people always ask me, you know, how do you come up with these ideas? And, and I think it's just, um, I try to think of funny things that, that's not normal that people would laugh at. And again, because I think, you know, sometimes life can be so serious that, you know, I can't write romance. I've tried to write it and it turns out funny. Um, <laughs> you know, I've tried to, like I said, if I was to write a romance scene, you know, the girl might flick off a piece of clothing and whack the guy in the eyeball, and he might have to go to emergency surgery. That's as, that's as close as romance as I get. So, um, you know, I just I just don't write that stuff. And so, and if there's nothing wrong with it, I read it. I just can't write it for some reason. I'm tried. But, um, you know, I just think that people, when I come up with these other storylines that give people an alternative to romance or, you know, women's fiction, that I just want them to laugh and to, to smile. And, you know, some of it, I'm writing a series now that won't come out till 2014 about a funeral home. And I don't know how funny people might think that is but it is funny whenever the people are ghosts in the funeral home mm -hmm. and um when people are coming through line you know to see them um at their viewing then the ghost's like why did she come here i didn't even like her when i was living much less when i was dead mm -hmm. so i think that's going to be a really cute series mm -hmm. um out next year so um, i'm okay. working on that right now so fabulous we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and um, did you did you write a guest blog for our uh, for TV backstory? I did. Great. I did. A lot of times, people ask me um, what my writing process is. Uh, you know, readers are always fascinated. They think that uh, you know it's this glamorous life and it's not you know writing is hard and um you know i still have to get up and i still have to get out of bed and and get ready and go to a job um you know sometimes it's in my house and sometimes it might be at those sports practices or in my van or you know wherever i'm at at the time so i wrote a blog on what my true writing process is and how unglamorous you know, it is. <laughs> okay, that'll be good to read. I think the readers will really, or the viewers will really enjoy that. Um, I hope so. I tried to incorporate some humor in that as well, so. Okay, and so is there a link to your website and where they can get your books and stuff? In that. Absolutely. They can get my books at any major retail uh, okay. seller online, um, Barnes & Noble, Amazon. Um, they can go into Barnes & Noble and get a print copies, um, you know, the brick and mortars, um, IndieBound. Um, and then you can also find me online at tanyacappis.com. And I also have a blog that's for readers, and that'll tell you how to uh, become a member of my street team and how to get author swag. I send out a lot of um, little goodies to people, and we call it swag. So, um, you know, and, and upcoming events and where I'm going to be, and I would love, love, love to meet everybody in person. Um, you know, like I said, I love interacting with my readers, and I think it's just one of the greatest things about being an author. And what do the street team, what do you expect street team members to do? You know, they're not expected to do anything. Uh, I say, um, you know, you can promote some of my stuff if you want to, or you don't have to. And they generally all do. They take it upon themselves. Um, I'm on a blog tour right now um, on uh, the Internet, obviously. And so every day I'll post a link to that, and then several of them just share it, or they'll t go to the blog, and then they're tweeted, and they always leave comments. So I have a pretty good following that come over and follow wherever I go online. So that's always fun, and I always respond to every single one of them. Um, you know, there's not a day go by that I don't. Um, and so my street team, you know, they can uh, not do anything. But, you know, a street team started back in the 50s, um, maybe even earlier than that. Um, and what it was was, say, uh, it was uh, the music industry. Maybe when mm -hmm. Elvis wasn't big, what they did was they made a copy of his um, record. And all the little kids that ran around in the streets, they would give them a copy and say, hey, um, I want you to run around and hand these out. You know, I want people to listen to this guy. And um, that's what's called a street team. 
Right. So I tweaked it about a year and a half ago, and now I have a lot of friends that have started street teams that love it, and some of them require, you know, their uh, readers to do things, like they'll send them bookmarks that they need to pass out or little trinkets like that, but, you know, I don't do that. I just uh, wanted my street team so I could connect with them and let them know that I do care and that I appreciate everything just buying one book, you know, um, and if they don't like it they don't like it but I still appreciate it so yeah. that's really I guess I didn't it, you know what I just you expect them to, them to do but what uh, what do they usually do you know because the musician street teams always threw out flyers when they were coming to town yeah what my street team does is a lot of times they'll promote a book that's coming come out or they'll put up a review of the book and then they'll say oh I reviewed this book um, a lot of them have blogs and so review blogs that have thousands upon thousands of followers yeah, and so cool. um, whenever they whenever they blog about the book I know the book sales do go up um, okay. and so they spread the word you know that mm -hmm. they like my books and maybe their friends might like it as well so uh, but that's what they generally do they spread the word and it's been great you know I couldn't have asked for a better group of people and people join every day so and then they friended each other and they some of them realize that they live by each other so they've gotten together and um, they formed book clubs and they've had me at their book clubs through Skype, and I send them, about a month before the book club, I'll send them treats, and um, I'll send them, um, you know, sign, um, oh, and do autograph you, different things that they want signed, and yeah, you attend by or video? I do this thing called the Keeper Case, I'm sorry. And you attend by video? I do, a live Skype, um, and so <coughs> they... Um, you know, they seem to enjoy that, and we have a lot of fun. And then after, you know, a lot of their um, friends that have read the book then pick up the other books in the series. So, um, you know, it's just, it's it's so nice that they do all that. And then um, we do, I don't know, do you have a Kindle? Do you have a Kindle, um, Julia? I have a Nexus, but I got the Kindle app. Yeah, and so what we do is um, you can get on there and do book chat in the book. So oh. I'll say, oh, I'm gonna host a, I'm gonna host a Kindle book chat. And Nook doesn't have that yet, um, but we have a Nexus, and I haven't tried the Google Nexus, but mm -hmm. um, we do a, we do what's called a book chat. And I'll say, I'm going to be on, you know, the Kindle book chat at 9 o'clock in, you know, A Charming Cure, which is a book of mine. And so they have to own the book. And then they can get in on the book chat. And we talk about different things. And we talk about, uh, you know, things in the book. But I think how cool would that be if, like, one of your favorite authors, if you're in the book chat, all of a sudden pops in and says, hey, thanks, you know. And so, you know, it's just another way to reach those readers and let them know that I appreciate everything they do. So, you know, technology, again, can be good. And technology yeah. sometimes can be bad. <laughs> That's true. That's true. I agree. Well, we yeah. really are running out of time here. So I want to thank you very much for being on the show. And I want to encourage well, thank the, you. And I want to encourage the viewers to go see Tanya's um, article about her writing process on TVbackstory.com. And there you can link up with her website and her books. All right. Well, thanks so much, Julie. I really appreciate it. Thank you for being with us.